Aloha! Today's tips topic is getting you acquainted with the concept of teacher portfolios. Let's get started. So first of all, what is a teacher portfolio and why should you develop and maintain one? At its essence, a teacher portfolio is an organizational tool. It's a way of organizing all of the documents and other items that highlight who you are as a professional in the field. It also provides a means for keeping those items updated and easy to find when you need them. For some people, a portfolio might be a drawer in a filing cabinet with separate folders for each portfolio item. Others may prefer to have the digital equivalent of that filing cabinet on their computers. And for others yet, it might be a combination of the filing system and an electronic portfolio on a website that showcases their professional self. The other important role a teacher portfolio plays is to guide, inform, and supplement your applications and interviews for professional jobs. It can help you to quickly and effectively match your knowledge and skills with the needs of each potential employer and it helps you to choose what employers see as most salient. So in summary, a teacher portfolio helps you to organize all the items that highlight your professionalism, to keep those items current and easily available, and to ensure that you present your best professional self in your job applications and interviews. Next, let's look at the possible components of a teacher portfolio. In their 1998 article, Teacher Portfolios, Wolf Quintero and Brown provide a lengthy list of items that could be included in a teacher's portfolio, which TIPS has adapted over the years to include the large number of potential items you see here on the slide. Things like a CV, statement of your philosophy of teaching, video clips of your teaching, relevant comments from course evaluations, or thank you letters from students, teaching materials and lesson plans you have developed, and samples of students' work with your feedback. The list goes on. As you can see, it's a bit daunting, enough to make anyone want to procrastinate about starting a teacher portfolio. TIPS surveyed a number of employers of language teachers throughout the United States, and we consistently found the same items came up again and again as those that were essential to employers, either as part of an application packet or something that would likely be discussed in an interview. CVs, cover letters, philosophy of teaching statements, and sample materials and lesson plans that exemplify your teaching. Those four items, along with job searches and job interviews, are the elements covered in TIPS. We do recommend that after completing TIPS, you continue to collect, reflect on, and annotate, and incorporate some of the other potential items into your portfolio as time allows. Next, we'd like to introduce the concept of master portfolio items versus tailored portfolio items. One common mistake people make when applying for jobs is to use exactly the same CV and almost exactly the same cover letter for every job they apply to. This might have been a reasonable strategy when you were younger and applying for your first ever job, sending out a large number of applications to a wide range of entry-level jobs, where a more generic approach is less damaging. In contrast, jobs in language teaching typically have a list of minimum and desired qualifications that are professional in nature and often are specific to the needs of the program. And so a one-size-fits-all application will not do a good job of fitting the job you really want now and addressing that job's unique needs. Thus, you'll want to have both master and tailored items as part of your portfolio. The master items will be more all-inclusive, and the tailored items will be adjusted for the specific job. For example, a master CV would likely include all of your work experience, knowledge, skills, and interests, whereas a tailored CV would include those items that are most relevant to the specific job and perhaps even leave out items that are not relevant. These differences and strategies for them will be explained in subsequent lessons. A few last words about organizing your portfolio. 
We think one of the most important takeaways from the Wolf Quintero and Brown 1998 article is the fact that maintaining a portfolio gives you more control of the information you are providing a potential employer, whether it is a tailored hard copy portfolio or an electronic portfolio. It allows you to choose how information is arranged and highlighted so that your strengths and the ways that your skill set can meet their needs is immediately evident to the potential employer. Also, whether you are using a physical file cabinet or maintaining your portfolio on your computer, we strongly encourage you to back up your portfolio on a regular basis. It takes a bit of time to scan items like thank you cards and to regularly back up your files to the cloud, but if anything ever happened, you'll be thankful you did. Next up, test what you've learned in the Think section. Check out the Dig Deeper resources to gain additional perspectives on the value, uses, and ways of organizing a teacher portfolio. Read the Brown and Wolf Quintero 1997 article and respond to the following prompt in the Discuss section. What are your key takeaways from the article? As a suggested follow-up task, Set up an organizational system for your teacher portfolio, which could be a physical space, on your computer, or in the cloud. Thanks for listening.